I don't know if it's just my phone or if it was Periscope, but we switched phones to see. It might, might be the app or it might be with my phone. But anyways, so um, the Democrats, now I have said before, I, if you guys are new to my blog, I'm not political. I do not vote. I never have vote, voted, and I won't vote. So when I talk about these things, I'm not trying to sway you either way about voting. I'm just giving my opinion of what I think is going on right now. So what I am observing and what I see when I see people um, jumping on things then like that aren't necessary. Like right now, the thing I just saw was uh, some press conference with the uh, with the president and. All they wanted to keep saying was that he didn't do enough in February for the virus, which here's the thing, you guys, this virus is not deadly in the sense of it's not killing more people than the ones that are surviving. What's happening is a huge portion are surviving and a very small, small, small portion are dying. And that's the normal portion that die every year from the flu virus is the people that are already sick, very sick. Like the very sick elderly, not even just the elderly, the sick elderly. If you're healthy elderly, then you have no problem because you could live through the flu. This is how it goes. If you could live through the flu, you could live through this one. If you can't live through the flu, as in you're already so sick, then you can't live through this coronavirus, COVID virus, 19, you know. Same scenario. All they're doing is they're exaggerating and they're scaring the older people more. They're like, oh, it's the older people. It's always the older sick people that die from the flu. They also can die from sometimes the common cold because they're so sick. Their immune, they have their immune is immunity levels have gone so down. They have immune deficiencies, and they just every little thing can make them sick enough to die because they're already sick. This flu virus, this COVID virus, cannot kill you if you are not already sick it cannot kill a healthy person we have not seen that we have not seen that we have not seen a completely healthy person get this and die what we have seen is they recover and they do fine rita wilson the wife of tom hanks both of them had the covid virus in march i think it was march or february i don't remember exactly she now is teamed up with Naughty by Nature and is doing hip hop songs. And she is, if not, uh, if not 60, she's very close, like in her late 50s. But I think she's in her 60s. I don't know her exact age. You'd have to Wikipedia it. But um, did that one crap out too? Oh, okay. I thought maybe age average supposed to be now. But um, anyways, so she's doing great. And she had the virus and has recovered. And a huge portion of people have recovered way more than uh, than have died and like in the hundreds of thousands have recovered and in the you know what are we i don't know what the new numbers today but less than 50,000 have died in the US now so what i'm seeing is now all of the people are jumping on Trump and they're focusing on that he didn't do enough in February well for one thing this virus is not killing everyone so it doesn't matter what Trump did in February because it was is not a serious virus are you guys not understanding this it is a regular flu virus that now the propaganda has gone nuts and are trying to scare people because they want to make the president look bad. That is the bottom line. Now, I am not saying I am for Trump or the other ones or anything. I'm not for any of them. I don't vote. I think they're all buffoons. But what I'm saying is the Democrats are using this to try to take down Trump. They did not create the virus. They jumped on the opportunity of a regular flu virus that comes around every year, and they exaggerated it and scared us and messed up the economy, brought down the stock market. Now we're going at Trump saying that he's a dictator because he said that the president has uh, complete authority to make decisions. And now everyone's, oh, he's a dictator. Here's a dictator. Um, well, for one thing, you guys... We don't have to, as we're finding out state by state, listen to the president. That's what states are finding out. And what's happening is the Democratic states are taking more extreme measures than the president is saying. And they're self-sabotaging their own states to try to make the president look bad. So I don't know why 
they would even call him a dictator when they're not even listening to him anyways. You know what I mean? Like most states are in violation of the federal government with the marijuana. Um, if you are selling cannabis in your state, you are in violation of the federal government. So you're not really listening to the president anyways. So this idea that even what he says really matters is kind of silly anyways. So when they're, when these people know that, because they're not listening, so the Democrats are not listening to what he says. They're making their own decisions by either having weed in their state, uh, by choosing what measures they're doing for their state. Um, those are in violation of whatever the president says. So why are you worried that he's going to be a dictator? You don't listen to him anyways. Do you get what I'm saying? So all the only reason why you're saying he's a dictator is because you want to people to see, like, they want to make him look bad. And I'm not saying Trump's a good person. I'm just saying they are trying to make him look even worse than he already is. Which... <laughs> I'm not on Trump's side. Don't get me wrong. That guy does all kinds of things that I do not agree with. I do not agree that he does not pay well, people. Too. Hey, we have a kind of a short scope today, guys. Because oh, yes. I forgot to tell you. On. This is going to be a... Yeah. yeah. I was just like, no one wants to hear about this. But, uh, but they need to. But they need to because I have to cut my scope short because they are cutting off our water here for nine hours here at our apartments. Um and so what we have to do, they're cutting it off at 9 a.m. And then till you know, nine hours after that. So I have to prep all of our food this morning. I'm going to cook the chicken. For anyone that was watching yesterday, I have to cook the chicken. And I'm going to cook up that tuna, too. I cooked it last night, the first time I seared some. Because uh, uh, these are new to me, cooking. I've never cooked tuna. Oh, it was delicious. I wish I had scoped it, but I was so tired of scoping. Yes, I did so many. And it's not, a, I love the scoping. It's the setting up because our lighting is really bad in our apartment. So if we don't set up the lights, it, it just would not be pleasant for you guys to watch. It'd be really dark. So every time we do a video, we got to move all the lights and get everything set up. And it's just, it's just that becomes the more work. So if you, well, I did so many scopes yesterday. So every time I feel like most of what we do is move things around our apartment. I mean, cause we really do. Cause we have, everything has a place, but then when we do any kind of video or anything, we move everything and then we have to move everything back. And then if we do it again, we move it again. Cause we can't leave the things in their place because usually it, they're <laughs> hazards. <laughs> As you guys have seen, it's like you're trapped in a spot with lights and uh, tripods and cameras everywhere so we have to move them out of the way so then every time then we have to reset them up when it starts we're like oh man we just unpacked everything in the sense of like putting it away and then we're like let's because we'll be like oh we want another photo and i'm like oh darn so we bring it all back out get a photo so you know but anyways so i need to do uh, i have to also uh, bathe i haven't yet so i have to do that before they cut off our water and i got to prep all the food because uh, I won't be able to do dishes and that will drive me insane if I have just dirty dishes after each meal so I'm just going to cook like two meals get us through the day and then um, late tonight when they turn back on the water then uh, that, then I can actually cook another meal and wash the dishes because I, I just can't stand that that would just drive me insane having those dishes in the sink all day I, 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 <laughs> you guys don't know this about me but I cannot leave dishes in the sink at all like I cannot uh, we can't watch a movie until I do the dishes. Like, he drives there, which is crazy. He's usually finished eating. Because what we'll do is I'll give him his meal, and then he sits um, um, at the couch. Usually we put we just watch on our iPad. We don't have a TV. So that's the time that we watch. And I have to do the dishes before I can sit down. So usually by the time I'm done with the dishes, he's already done eating, and we don't even end up watching a movie. But I'm just very OCD about that. I do not like dirty dishes. I, I don't know. So it's that's going to drive me insane today. But the point is they're going to cut it off at 9 a.m. So I have to do a bunch of prep so I can only talk to you guys for a little bit longer. Um, uh, because i got to get everything ready. And I'm like, ah. So yeah, nine hours, kind of no fun. water here. I think the big issue is every time you turn on the news, it's so obvious. It's, really it's cool. very obvious now because the Democrats are literally uh, just going at Trump, which is really unnecessary at this point because the numbers are coming in that not that many people are dying. People are recovering. So Trump actually took the appropriate measures, if not, I believe, way too extreme. But he had to do that because if he didn't do it, I mean, they were already up his throat about everything. Can you imagine if he didn't do anything? I mean, the Dems are always saying he didn't do enough. Like, dumb, dumbass over here, Sisolak, decided to put 45 days on Vegas, which was more than Trump had ever said to do. Um, and like I said, he did that. 
because he is a Democrat that is trying to sabotage the president because they want a Democrat in office because they really need a Democrat this next election because they don't want a Republican to be able to elect the next Supreme Court judge. And they do believe that one of those judges is going to die. If not, um, what's her name? One of them. They're all old, you guys. Those are the ones that are at risk for the flu virus because they are very old and not very healthy, a lot of them. Um, I keep forgetting her name, uh, but uh, it'll come to me and then pop out of my head. But anyways, um, she's she's very old. So why you say, oh, they were just protecting their state. Oh, really? That's why Steve Sisolak allowed construction to continue because he really cared about the livelihood of the people in his state. So he did not uh, worry about the lives of any construction member, even though they are having tons of cases at the construction sites now. So get this, they had two that we know of for sure at the Raider Stadium, which I believe there's way more because they always hide things at the Raider Stadium. They always hide negative news at the Raider Stadium. We have we had, we have caught them with that, that we heard it direct from the workers and they cover it up. So I imagine they've done the same with this. But also, here's the other thing, the resort world now, they have had, I guess, a bunch of it's cases, so they're hours. having to just like clean down the whole thing, like shut down and just like get it all sand, you know, hazmat. like whatever, hazmat. Well, that's Sing the word. Disinfect hazmat the disinfect the thing because it's been, the, it's been shut down. And this was what Governor like allowed to continue that he said was essential business was construction. You tell me how construction can't just wait a month or two. I mean, what is so essential in construction? Nugget, you might say, oh, there's timelines and things. Yeah, there was timelines for everything. Everyone had a timeline for their business right now yeah. in the sense of Everyone. I needed to pay rent. I needed to do this. I had bills. Everyone had that timeline. Construction should not have gotten any special treatment if it really was a serious deadly virus. That was the but it's not. It is a regular flu virus. All of the governors know that. The president knows that. He only acted because everyone was on his case so much. So in this scenario, I actually agree with Trump, which I don't say that very often. That's what I'm trying to say. I don't often agree with Trump. I do not like what he's done to the environment with the coal production. I don't like that we just bombed Iran. I don't like that we put a tax on China, which now has caused so much money to the regular people here now have to pay more and the small businesses because all, everything they buy from China now has a higher tax. So if you notice when you buy on eBay or Amazon, everything's more expensive because most of our products we do get from China. So now for the small people now that has hurt our budget every single purchase. Now the big people might not notice that 25%. I sure did. I said, oh man, everything just, uh, what's this new tax they added to everything? You know, because I knew about it, but then when it really came in, I thought, oh geez, as everything went up. And if you tried to buy things like cell phone covers, it used to be like a dollar. And now, like, you can't get it for like less than ten dollars for this cheapy little thing. You know, you buy the little plastic, little plasticky things. You used to be able to get it for a dollar. Mm mm. These things are like you can't get anything for ve much less than you know seven to ten dollars for items that used to be like ninety nine cents. You don't see that anymore because those used to come from China. Very rare. Everything's now, you know, go gone up quite a quite a few. And those. You think, oh, who cares? When you're a company buying things that were a dollar that are now seven dollars a piece, that is huge for a small business. Like that's a huge increase, um, you know. And the, you'll see that on a lot of products because I'll be noticing things like we used to get the cell phone cases, and I thought, oh, I'll just get a new one. And I was like, when did they become ten dollars for this little cheapy thing? I was happy to pay it like two dollars because they're crappy. It's like these little junky ones. You throw them out, and you know, you put them on. And they you know, and then they're not very good, and they get dirty, and you get a new one. It's not the nice ones that everyone spends like 60 bucks for. We don't do that nonsense. You don't need those $60 phone covers. But anyways, um, I like to change them up, get different colors and stuff. But now I'm like, I don't want them for $10. They were like a $2 item, you know what I mean? But, but I'm not a business. But let's say I was a business that needed that product. And now I'm like, I can't afford it. So if you think that people are not mad at the U.S., uh, as in especially China. That's where I think this first thing happened, and that's what Trump's been saying, that it was a Chinese hoax in the sense of the exaggeration of the virus. I'm not saying there's not a virus. Of course, we all know there's a virus. 100%, we all know there's a virus. 
We know that, okay? But we also know if we look at the numbers, if we look at the statistics, more people are recovering than dying. And the only ones that are dying are the unhealthy already, like very unhealthy. I'm not saying just because you feel a little unhealthy, you're at risk. If you could live through the flu, you can live through this. If you thought the flu might kill you, like you were someone that was that sick, those are the people that should be of concern. Those are the people that should wear the mask, not the healthy walking around their stupid masks. I just, when I see a mask, I just go, oh, you fucking moron. I mean, literally, when I see someone with a mask, I think they're a moron when they're walking down the street. I literally think they're a moron. And if you guys have a mask on, I'm sorry, but you are falling into this nonsense propaganda because a mask ain't going to save your dumb ass anyways. Um, and from if you really could die from this virus, okay? All you do is you tell the whole world that you believe all this nonsense when you put that mask on your face. So until they make it legal, I ain't putting no mask on, and I ain't washing my hands every fucking five seconds for 20 seconds with antibacterial soap. I ain't doing that because antibacterial soap takes all of my good germs, and my good germs help me from getting sick in the first place. So I ain't washing my hands every Every two seconds like they say either so they can take those th two w things of advice and shove them up their ass I ain't putting a mask on and I ain't using antibacterial soap and guess what I'm healthy as can be and I've seen a lot of interacted with a lot of different people doing this I ain't staying indoors I've been walking around I've been going to stores I've been seeing clients I've been doing all kinds of things and I am healthy and if I got this flu I know I would recover 100%. Because if I got anything right now, I know I recover. If I got cancer, I'd know I recover. Because guess what? Guess what feeds cancer? Guess what, guys? Sugar feeds cancer. So if you don't eat sugar, your cancer can't spread. So even if I got cancer, which I wouldn't get since I don't eat sugar now, but even if I get, got it or had it, it's going to go away because I don't eat sugar. And that is the way to cure cancer. Jedi Joy just told you how you cure cancer. Don't eat sugar. Cancer feeds on sugar only. Sugar alone. You don't eat sugar, cancer goes away. It's as simple as that. Everyone wants to say, what causes cancer? All these hundred million different things. Doesn't matter what causes it. What makes it spread is sugar. Sugar, sugar, sugar. That's it. You cut out your sugar, cancer goes away. And you know what instead they usually do to people that have cancer? They give them a high sugar diet of like protein drinks and smoothies. That's what they gave Jedi Richard's father. He got cancer. They get, put him on an all smoothie diet and he died within a couple years of getting cancer because his, his cancer spread like wildfire in his body because they put him on an all sugar diet. Right before he died, the lie he was not into any kind of um, nutrition thing. He was not a guy that uh, really, you know, uh, cared about uh, things like organics or gluten or anything like that. But the last thing he told Jared before he died, he said, avoid gluten. That was his advice. And Jared didn't think anything of it at the time. We continued to eat. And I, I kept, it kept ringing in my brain, ringing in my brain. He didn't know the sugar at the point because he didn't know. But that was enough of a clue that I started to research gluten. And that's how it all got uncovered of what I've discovered now of the organics, the GMOs, the sugar, the dairy, all this. But it started with gluten. Once I started reading about gluten, then I just opened worlds of different things of, whoa, you got this and all the things that we're eating. And so how we stay thin is we eat all organics, no gluten, no dairy, no GMOs, no artificial anything. No caffeine, no alcohol, and basically no sugar. Our sugar only comes from leafy greens and garlic. So you get a little bit of sugar from both of those very, very low amounts. Um, that's it. We don't consume sugar in any other source. We only drink water. We drink water and sparkling water. If you guys saw my blog, I got those Topo Chicos or Topo Chico. I don't know how you say it. Wonderful sparkling water from Mexico. I love them. Those are my treat. That is my treat. If I say I got a treat, it will be 
bath salts, or sparkling water. Treats do not come in the form of food. That is not how we should treat ourselves. We got this really bad idea that we should work hard and treat ourselves with food. No, 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 no. Food should be nutrition. Food should not be this treat or this, really this experience that we've made it. You guys saw how I cook. I cook. It's delicious. I love cooking. It's fun. But this experience that we've made it to the level where everything is around food, where we get together and we only meet people for food, alcohol, or coffee for the most part. Very few people get together for water. I mean, that's almost weird, right? So it's always around food, and it's always around uh sugary foods. And even if you don't think it's sugary foods, it is because it's always high carb foods like breads, pastas. Think of when you have like a, 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 what do you call those? What do they call those? I can't even think of it. The potlucks where people bring, it's always casseroles, right? Uh, all high carb sugary things as they call comfort foods, right? Those are not what you want to eat. That's what everyone wants to eat. The reason why you want to eat it is because when you eat those things, they are addictive, so they make you want to eat more of that thing. But if you cut those out, you actually won't desire those foods anymore. I know it seems crazy because you think, oh, I'll never not desire bread or I'll never not desire uh, frappuccino or I'll never not desire pasta. Actually, if you don't eat those things, you lose the desire for them. You only have the desire as you're still eating them and as you're still eating sugar. You say, oh, I cut those out. If you still have sugar in your diet in any high shape or form in the sense of like, like I've said before, you only want 30 grams of sugar a day total. And sugar is in everything and everything breaks down to sugar. So you got to make sure those 30 grams, you're not getting them just by chugging that juice real quick and it's going right into your bloodstream and all that sugar. You know what I mean? Because while you thought you were getting protein, any beverage is it's just straight sugar. <laughs> You're not getting what you think because it's going right into your bloodstream. Now, yeah, you might get a little protein, but I'm saying people are, people, what happens? Um, I kind of explained this the other day, but let me say it again because this is a really big thing where people get this confusion where they say, well, it does have protein. Yes, but here's where people get confused because people think, let me look at this. Uh, okay, I'm going to say I have this muscle milk, okay? This is the thing some people like. Or they have a vegan option. That one's not vegan, you know, where it's, you know, some protein thing that's made of almond milk or something or or just all the different options. There's so many different options now. I've done them all, I'm telling you. I used to love those. And it'll say 7 grams of protein, okay? And then over here you look at, oh, well, look at this chicken. It only has 7 grams of protein as well. Okay, so these should be comparable, right? I should be able to say this was my seven grams or let me choose this nice tasty beverage for seven grams of protein. We're all equal, right? Calories, same. We're all equal, right? We're not, okay? Because for one thing, there's a lot more sugar over here. Okay, just alone, just alone, just in the product, there's more sugar, okay? Because the... One of the only things in the world that has, like, zero sugar is animal protein. Any other protein has sugar. Even things like beans, sprouts, you know, like other forms of protein that uh, vegans would choose have higher sugar, carb, sugar, whatever you want to say, than animal protein. Okay, so right there, then you're going to have more sugar. Okay, so let's just say we have, let's say over here we have four grams of sugar to our seven grams of protein, right? Over here we have seven grams of protein to zero grams of sugar. So right there we already are getting more sugar, which sugar is always an issue. You do not want sugar. You want minimal sugar. I know you need sugar to live, but you only need 30 grams a day to live. And any more than that is stored as fat. And starts to become an issue. And that's where diseases and disorders and cancer and candida overgrowth and things are fed from your excess sugar. Okay? Now, go back to our scenario with the drink. The other issue with our drink that now has 7 grams 
of protein to the three to four grams of sugar. Our other issue is now when we drink this beverage, it goes right into our bloodstream. Okay, it doesn't take any energy to work off what we just consumed for this guy over here, right? But our meat over here, it'd be chicken, beef. I, you guys know I love beef, but whatever you want to do, chicken, beef, whatever, organic would be preferable to what I want you to do, but I know it's expensive for some people. Right, organic is also best for you and the animals. So if you love animals, organic options are the way to go. They, the best treatment for the animals, most of them get, the, if you look at the things, you can get cage-free, you can get pasture-raised, you can get uh, grass-fed, you can get no hormones, no steroids, all kinds of things. Some of them will even say how, how large of an area they give for the different animals. I mean, you can, some of them get really descriptive, and you can find out all those things, and then you go, oh, I feel comfortable with this product. Okay, now back to our scenario. So that one goes right in your bloodstream. You don't use any energy to convert any of these calories and this added sugar, right? Over here, we got to break down the protein. So we're using calories, we're using energy to break it down with our already lack of sugar over here. Remember, we had no sugar, right? Eventually, all substances break down to sugar too at the very end. But you hope that you lost a lot of it in the process, right? So with your chicken or your beef or whatever, you burned off a bunch of the calories and, you know, whatever, you know, you w used a lot of the energy source already as now at the end, whatever's left over, we're going to reserve, right? Well, over here, we have like the whole thing left over because you did instant in your bloodstream. You got your energy, boost you, you know, you did your little sprint and you got woo, sugar high, right? Everyone knows about the sugar high and crash, but this is the reason I'm telling you, uh, you know, there's deeper, there's a lot of reasons for it. People just think it's just the way it is. No, there's, a, there's so many things going on in your body of why that's happening. And the one thing is the insulin, like I've talked before, the, um, which I'm going to talk about right now, actually. So, so that goes right into your bloodstream. And now any extra is immediately stored as fat. Because you didn't give your body really any any opportunity to burn it off. Unless, let's say, you went right to the gym, okay? And you burned off, let's say that, you burned off that whole drink. Good on you for doing that. But here's the other issue that you didn't realize when you did that beverage. Is every time you get excess sugar, your body produces insulin, and insulin tells your body to store fat. So when you had now our scenario of the chicken versus the protein shake, all of that excess sugar also told your body to start producing insulin. Where over here we didn't have any, remember? We had zero sugar. So during that time that you ate your chicken, you ate your grilled chicken before you hit the gym, there was no excess sugar. So your body never got that sensor to start producing insulin. While over here... The whole time you were at the gym, your body said start producing, insu start producing insulin. Well, insulin tells your body to store fat and to go into a dormant hibernation mode. So while you thought, oh, this would be great for the gym, you actually told your body you want to chill, you need to sleep and store fat and don't exercise. So you wonder why you're feeling good at the gym and then crash. Right, there's one of the reasons. The other reason is because it is highly addictive. You know, you do need more. It is, it's a drug. Sugar is a drug. So people literally are having withdrawals when they desire sugar again. That is a drug withdrawal. Sugar is a drug. It is our most addictive drug we have in the, that we know of in existence because it's the only one that we need for survival but can kill us in excess. And it does kill us in excess and it usually kills us slowly in excess and that's what obesity is. Is too much sugar killing you slowly. And that is why being fat doesn't matter about whether it looks good or not. It ultimately 
is killing you because it is not healthy to be overweight. It puts a lot of pressure on all of your organs. Too much sugar feeds all diseases are fed on sugar. And the biggest one is cancer. We see more and more cancer because we are seeing more and more sugar consumption. As people continue to just hit the Starbucks and the smoothie shops and they think these are healthy options, they really think when they're doing the protein shake, that's the healthy option. That's where it's even worse. It'd be different if they thought they were drinking a milkshake before the gym, which they are drinking a milkshake. It is basically the same thing. Once you have that much sugar, it don't matter. And you think, oh, I got that protein, but it doesn't matter. You're going to start doing that insulin, storing fat thing. You might as well have just done a milkshake. You didn't do yourself any favor because you thought it was prettier because it said oh, protein and said vegan and said this and that, or it said organic even. You see organic smoothies, and you say, Jedi I Joy said organic, so I can have this wonderful smoothie. Only if you want to have a lot of sugar in your diet and be susceptible to all kinds of diseases and disorders and be fat, then you can drink your smoothies. I did an all-smoothie diet. Most delicious diet I ever did. I thought, wow, if I could eat like this every day, this is wonderful. And then every day I got fatter and fatter and fatter. And I thought, "Mm, I just love this. I would make these wonderful smoothies with avocado and tahini and almond butter and bananas and all. I just thought I was this health nut. I put maca powder in there and protein powder and we'd put you know, all these berries, and I just thought I was just living this healthy little life. Oh my gosh, that is all sugar. And not only is it all sugar just in its regular form, now we condensed it into a smoothie that went straight into our bloodstream. It had been, would have been better if you had eaten all of those berries and all of that fruit just by itself. I chomped it. Once you condensed it into your smoothie, now you made it straight sugar. (laughs) You basically took out any of the health benefits that you would normally get from fruit of the fiber. People say, oh, those Nutribullets keep the fiber in there. So you get the fiber in the smoothie. For one thing, we had those Nutribullets. That only applies for about a couple minutes when it is instantly, you still have fiber, but then that goes away. So if you let that smoothie sit for a second, now it's just straight sugar. But there is a moment that it still has the fiber content. You can get a little bit of fiber if you drink it, but it don't matter. It still went right into your bloodstream, even if it had the fiber. But at least you got a little bit of benefit of the fiber. But once that smoothie sits for any amount of time, the fiber goes away. I don't know the reason for that. I'm not a scientist, but that happens. Uh, Jai Rich might know. He's a scientist. I'm not. But there is a, there's a reason why that happens. You'd have to look into it. But I, I know that happens. I've, I've researched about it, but I don't remember the actual science to know why the fiber content goes away. But for whatever reason, once things sit, uh, they basically all just become sugar. So now your smoothie, especially if you bought it at a store, is sugar. It is no longer, there's no fiber in there anymore. And the protein, like I said, you'll get some protein, but you're getting it with so much sugar that it's not really giving you what you want. It's not the protein that you think. Now back to my other, my scenario that we were talking about. The other issue, beyond what I just said, here's the other issue is, like I had said before, you want your Food to all of everything you consume, food, beverages, everything. You want it to be 60% protein, 20% fat, and 20% from sugar and carbs. Sugar and carbs are the same thing. If you don't know, carbs are just complex sugars. Just takes them longer to break down, but they're still just sugars. 
Um, but they're, they take a little bit longer to go in your bloodstream. That's why people will say, oh, eat rices and stuff. But they're still just sugars, and it's still a lot of sugar. It's still a lot of sugar, so we avoid all those kind of things because it's, it's more sugar than you need. I know you hate it. You want to eat your rice. You want to eat your pasta. You want to eat your breads. But if you want to be healthy and thin, those just can't be eaten. And I go, all the fun things can't be eaten. Well, once you actually cut that stuff out and you don't eat it anymore, it doesn't actually sound that fun anymore. It actually sounds kind of nasty, most of the stuff, because you just kind of know what it does to your body, and you're like, oh, no thank you. But um, anyway, so back to my scenario. So you have your protein here. That was 7 grams of protein of your chicken or your beef or whatever. And now you had your 7 grams over here of your protein smoothie, uh, 7 grams of protein to 3 to 4 grams of sugar. Okay? But you generally, what someone will do is they'll forget about the sugar. And all they'll count, account for their protein smoothie here was the protein. So they'll want to put it over here with this guy here, which had zero. So this would fit into your 60%, right? Because you have your 60% you're getting from protein, right? So we'll put him over here in this, like our big circle over here, you know? We're going to have a circle over here. So then everyone wants to say, oh, I have my, my smoothie. Put him over here, okay? But no, your smoothie had sugar. So your smoothie needs seven grams here, but don't forget those four grams you just used of sugar. People don't want to remember those ones. They want to count just the protein ones. So then they think, oh, I got my protein there, so now I can still have some sugar because I, I didn't, you know, I had my, that was my protein. I want my sugar. That was your protein and your sugar. And even more sugar than you thought because you, right into the bloodstream and stored all the excess as fat. And it's very rare to be able to, even if you're at the gym, work off an entire smoothie. I used to do those, um, they called it, I believe they called it heat. Uh, here I went to LVAC, which is the Las Vegas Athletic Club. They did this heat training class. It was intense. It was a circuit training, and I went with this one instructor. She was she was the most intense old lady. Okay, she's someone that she is very old. I believe she's, um, and I only say very old for being a fitness trainer. She was like 80, 80-something. 80 so in shape. The woman, and she was a fitness teacher. She ran this class. I couldn't keep up with this woman. It was insane. And so she does not worry about getting the virus, I'm sure. But anyways, uh, it was like an hour 15 class of just circuit training, just I mean, I, I would want to die. I'd be just drenched in sweat. And I'd look at my watch. I'd burn like 200 calories, maybe 250. I'm like, really? <laughs> Come on. So what happens is people think, oh, I can have this 500 calorie, 1,000 calorie, whatever smoothie because I'm going to the gym. But in reality, they only burn off 200 calories, 300 calories, whatever at the gym. So now, like I said, even if you did that right before the gym, you anything you didn't burn off, excess stored as fat. So all that time you spent at the gym working out, at the end, the smoothie basically no one voided all of your gym time. Because <coughs> <coughs> everything you did at the gym didn't even balance out what you drank from that smoothie. Like that smoothie caused you, you were going to store more fat than what you burned off. So you see where it all it comes down to what you eat, not how much you work out. You cannot work out enough when you're eating bad food. There's not enough time in the day. There's not enough energy of a person to work out enough to be the exact size you want um, when you're consuming all that food. You see people like go to the gym, you're like, oh, they get these bodies and they're so ripped. But most of them probably would prefer to be... Um, different than that's why they're still going to the gym so they're not even at their ideal whether it be maybe they're bulkier than they are maybe they're not as bulky as they want to be whatever some people want to be bulkier some people want to be less bulky I want to be less bulky I don't like the big huge arm thing some girls are into that now where they want to be like I don't do things to where I uh, I never wanted big arms when I went to the gym I wanted just toning so I always did the lightweights to tone. I never was about bulking up. Some people, that's the thing, guys. I know a lot of guys are into bulking up. But a lot of people are going to the gym to not bulk up. They're trying to stay lean and toned. But as they're going to the gym, instead of 
getting smaller, they're getting bulkier, even if they have muscle, but they're bulkier. You see that the people that they might even be a lot of muscle, but muscle weighs more than fat, as we know. And the food they're eating is actually making their bones get bigger because what's happening is they're ingesting all of the hormones and steroids from the animals or uh, whatever the thing they're um, having or they're having too much sugar or whatever. So that's why it's important to have organics. People think it's just a flavor preference or um, uh, just a thing where you maybe it's just good for you to have organics once in a while. No, it's uh, very important because all of the other foods either have super high sugar, gluten, dairy and usually they have all of the three of a lot of these things or you know like i have several of the things um gmos which is genetically modified organisms um uh antibiotics steroids hormones pesticides all of these things are in all some some one of the above and if not several of the above are in all conventional food and all of those things are causing issues. So that is why organics are important. People have this tendency to think, I'm going to treat myself. I'm going to get an organic option today. You want to think organics long term because what you want to think is it's I don't want to be putting antibiotics, steroids, hormones in my body, uh, gluten, dairy, all of these things. Anytime. Anytime. It shouldn't be a, let me treat myself once in a while and have some cake. It should be, I don't want to ever put those things in my body because I know they are harmful to me now. And we have a tendency to, uh, to make a joke out of doing things harmful. Like we, we praise over drinking. Oh, I got so wasted. Oh, I don't even remember. We kind of praise that. We kind of praise overeating, especially if it's for a holiday. Oh, I stuffed myself on Thanksgiving. Oh, gosh, I unbuttoned butt my pants. Better wear stretchy pants for Thanksgiving and Christmas. Oh, man. You know, we kind of praise that. When really, those are things that are actually hurting us as a society. And we think, oh, no big deal. We'll work it off. But as we're seeing, it's not that easy to work off. And people are getting bigger and bigger and bigger as a whole. Like, we're seeing children with more obesity than ever. We're seeing generations where the parents are thinner than the children, we're starting to see that now because for whatever reason, some generations are a little more into fitness than other generations. We're seeing like the younger generation has not been taught any sort of fitness and then they're just taught to sugar and crappy foods and they're not and they're taught improper things or if anything, they're taught vegan is a healthy diet and which is a basically all sugar diet. And so they're as young people given really bad options that they think are healthy. So I saw this documentary a couple years back when Obama was in office, when Michelle was trying to do this thing to get the kids moving. Remember, she did that exercise thing. And we watched this documentary, and the kids were struggling. They were trying to do the exercise program. But no amount of exercise at recess or exercise at PE is going to take off the weight when these kids are consuming so much sugar. And most of it with the kids is coming through beverages. They're drinking sodas. They're drinking coffees. They're drinking smoothies. They're grabbing things on the way to school. They're throwing them in their lunch bag. Drinks have become a huge culprit of obesity because most people think drinks don't have an issue. They think drinks are like free calories for some reason. And drinks are completely the opposite. Beverages are what go straight in your bloodstream and all excess is stored as fat, which is a lot for most beverages. Look at the nutrition contents and look at the true serving thing too because we often will see one serving. And most of these drinks they put as 2.5 or 3 servings for a small little drink. You tell me who takes two and a half settings to drink most of these drinks <laughs> or three settings. Look at the serving things. It'll say 2.5 and most of these eight, eight, eight ounces. 
you tell me I'm going to take two and a half settings. So as in, I'm going to drink some, I'm going to maybe set it down for hours, come back in hours later, or, you know, however long they think. No, people are doing that one serving, check, check. So when you look at the nutrition facts, also do the math, because you're rarely doing it for the 2.5 or 3 servings. Mul multiply any of those numbers times the serving that they say in your drink. And I always laugh at how many they'll say for everything, too. Look at all your packages. Cereal's a good one. Man, oh, yeah, like anyone eats the serving size they say for cereal. Cereal, if you're still eating cereal, you really are just delaying the inevitable of that one's got to go. If you're holding on to cereal and milk, I'm sorry to tell you, you can't be healthy eating cereal and milk. It's actually one of the worst breakfast options they could have ever come up with. Because for one thing, sugar is extremely, or sugar, sugar, yes, cereal is sugar. Cereal is extremely high in sugar. All of them. Even if you say all oh, the oats and those ones, because still, those ones generally are made of some kind of gluteny substance or wheat, which wheat your body doesn't like either and doesn't know how to process and does the same thing like I've said before where it produces insulin because anytime your body doesn't know how to process something and especially a food or a beverage it's going to treat it as sugar because sugar is what everything breaks down to so if it doesn't know what qualification it goes into is in is this a protein is this a fiber is this a uh, fat is this a uh, um, you know whatever is this a carb is this, it'll just say it's sugar because it doesn't know it goes well, I don't know what this is I've never seen this before and even oh I eat that all the time so but yeah but it wasn't from Earth so it doesn't know there's certain things we are very smart and we evolve and everything evolves but there's certain things in nature that don't evolve and for some reason we're finding food was not supposed to evolve to the level that we're doing it. It could have evolved naturally, but we're trying to evolve it scientifically. And we would have thought that would have been okay because that works with technology. But it's not working with the food, unfortunately. I thought that it would too. You know, we thought, oh, you can have all of these other options. But I'm telling you firsthand from trying <laughs> everything and being a 15-year bulimic. So when you're a bulimic, if you all don't know this, you eat everything. So I have tried <laughs> probably every food on the planet, you know, and um, I, so I've experienced it, I've, you know, and um, I, I know what it's like to have the cravings. I know what it's like when certain foods just, you can't stop. You eat one and you got to eat the whole bag, be it a cookie, be it potato chips or pretzels, that is not a self-control thing. It's not self-control. It is those foods turn off the sensor in your brain. Same with gluten, same thing. Turns off the sensor in your brain to tell you you're full. So no time while you're eating those foods will you ever feel full. That is why you continue to eat. They are also highly addictive. So you're basically eating something highly addictive that now you don't know you're full. So you're like, this is delicious, and I don't feel full. I don't feel full. I don't know why I don't feel full. I just keep eating. The more you do, now also what's happening is you're, the whole thing I'm saying, you're doing that insulin thing, so now you're getting more tired. Now all you want to do is sit on the couch and stuff your face. I know this. This is what bulimics do. You may look at me now and see me thin and say, she don't know. I'm obese. She doesn't know. I know because all a bulimic is is an obese person that throws up. That all is, That is what a bulimic is. It is a person that should be obese by the amount of food they eat, but instead they cheat the system by throwing up. So I know what obese people go through, and I'm telling you, I understand, and it's hard, and food sucks. It really does. I remember thinking if I could just not eat and live, my life would be so much easier because food has become control. It's controlled my entire existence. If I just could just, you know how like you have addictions like alcohol, alcohol, you can stop drugs. You can stop. I thought, cause I was bulimic and I thought if I could just stop 
eating, all my problems would be solved. I wouldn't have to worry about this day in and day out. Well, of course, we can't stop eating because we would die. So you know what happened? I researched and I researched and I tried everything because I kept getting sick. When I finally stopped my bulimia, everything made me sick. And what I found out is what I'm telling you guys now. And now every day, you know what? I can eat, but I don't have any food addiction anymore. I do not think about food other than, oh, it might be time to cook a meal. I better get on that. That's the most, or, oh, we're out of food. I better go to the store and get some. But other than that, the thought of eating or needing to eat does not come up unless maybe I even miss two meals. Like if I miss one meal, I probably barely notice. But by two meals, I'm probably getting pretty hungry. I might be, okay, about time to cook. But that's as far as it goes. It's not a, oh my God, starving. I'm so hungry. I'm so exhausted. That is only sugar that makes you get that insane. And you know what? I just witnessed it the other day to myself when I put back in almond butter. I thought I was going to try almond butter, and I got that, oh, I need it. I need it thing again because even almond butter is too high in sugar. So what happens even though you think, oh, it's got all these healthy benefits, but the sugar is what makes it highly addictive no matter what substance. So the problem with vegan diets is most of their protein options are very high in sugar as well. So you still are going to have the same issues, like I said, your insulin production and just that craving issue. That's why vegan diets are extremely hard because you have cravings all day long, all day long, because you're eating an all sugar diet, basically. And even if you throw in protein, if you're eating that much sugar, we call it an all sugar diet, okay? So uh, say, oh, I get that X amount of protein. If it's getting that much sugar, we're going to call it a sugar diet because sugar is taking over. And your protein basically is just kind of sitting on the back burner. Good thing you're getting a little bit, but it's not doing what you think it's doing. And your body is living on sugar, 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 sugar. That's why you're seeing your body morph into things you don't like, where what used to be muscle, because protein makes muscle, not sugar. You need protein to continue to build muscle. Sugar makes fat. That's why we see people with more fat than muscle right now. We're seeing muscle go away and be replaced by literally blubber. I mean, you're seeing people with more, um, you know how you used to see people that were larger, but they still had muscle tone to them? You know, like they're just, we're just larger. Now you're seeing more, and especially with the younger gen, because they're, they're eating so poor at such a young age, even from birth, even their mother in the womb is eating poorly. So they're being born fatter, babies are fatter. They're being born with so much extra fat that they don't really have the opportunity to ever even burn it off, that it's, it's almost like they're starting so far behind. So they are being born fat, and people believe that they're just born fat and there's no option. There is no option to continue to eat what you eat and be thin. But if you change your lifestyle and eat, like I'm saying, the organic protein, organic animals, it needs to be your primary source of food. Everything else is a tiny amount. Like I say, we do leafy greens and garlic. Our primary source comes from animal protein, organic animal protein. And you say, what about the animals? That's why you choose organic, because then they treat the animals fairly. Now you say, well, I don't like eating animals at all, because the de they're dead. You cannot avoid eating death, because plants are living as well, and anything that is created in a lab is now a living organism. So you will always be eating death. And death is not a bad thing. Death is a part of life. Death is actually a beautiful part of life, because if we didn't have death, we wouldn't appreciate life. If everyone lived forever, they would, we would lose appreciation for life. Do you see? People have to die for us to appreciate what we have. And then also, you have to die so that you can go to another place and another existence because it gets pretty boring being on this planet for much longer than 100 years in the form that you're in.
For one thing, no one really likes being that old. As you get older, you know, you kind of wish you were younger. You don't really want to be all crickety. You know, no one really particularly enjoys being super old, unless they're the one fitness lady, like the lady at the LVAC that's 80-something, teaching the fitness class and kicking my ass. I would take her. She did the kick back, kick, kickbox classing. Holy crap. Combat kickbox class. And that's, a, that's a mouthful. Combat kickbox classing. What, I said that wrong. Kickboxing class. I can't, some things I can't say. Is that funny? Okay. Her, that class. Whew. And she's like 80 up there doing it. You feel like terrible because you're like, oh, how can I not keep up with this woman? But so she's an extreme. But most people don't want to live that. Oh, I don't want to be that old. I don't want to be that old. My mom died at 46. She actually killed herself. But my grandpa only lived to 64. He died of a heart attack. He actually, <laughs> I laugh because he died at a buffet restaurant because my grandpa loved eating terrible food. He ate the worst food, and he loved that, and he would get kicked out of buffets. He was not bulimic. <laughs> he just overate and got chubby, but um, he was all about overeating, and they would kick him out because they'd be like, sir, you have eaten enough eating. Because back then, you couldn't eat as much as you can now at buffets. Now they don't kick people out. I mean, people eat so much at buffets. And bulimics love buffets. I used to love the buffet. And if you ever see a small girl at a buffet and she's eating a lot, she's bulimic. Because any girl at a buffet, if she's eating like a normal amount, if she's thin, she's bulimic. I'm sorry to tell you, but she's bulimic. Because if a girl is eating a lot and is thin, she'll say it's a high metabolism, but they are bulimic. Right now, with the way society and food is, unless they work out a shit ton, and you would know that. But if they are eating a lot, there is no high metabolism right now. That does not exist unless you're maybe a very small child, and that rarely exists with small children anymore because most children are struggling with their weight as well. So this concept of, oh, I have a high metabolism is a lie. They are either throwing up, not eating, or taking some kind of drug that makes them thin. High metabolism does not exist to the level we think anymore because the food has gotten so bad and people are so addicted to caffeine too. So most people, even if they're not eating the bad food, they're eating caffeine. Well, caffeine, what it does, if you all missed my other blogs, Caffeine does similar, it's the whole sugar thing, but it does it in a different way. But it's the whole insulin issue, is what caffeine does, is it numbs your senses. So it numbs all of your hormone senses. And the one that it numbs, oh, that's what caffeine does, so that's why you don't feel um, as hungry or tired, because it just dulls your senses and your hormones. So you just don't feel as tired or hungry, but you still are as hungry and tired. So once the caffeine wears off, that's why you still feel tired and hungry. That's why you go for more caffeine because you didn't actually do anything but just numbed your senses. So what happens is you also numb your hormone senses. So then your, body, your blood sugar rises because your insulin hormone gets numbed. So it's not producing as much insulin as it was a couple minutes ago before you had that cup of coffee. So now your body, your blood sugar rises and your body says, oh, I need to produce more insulin. So it does more insulin production. Then when the other ones get out of their dormant little sleep mode, they're going to start producing again. So you're going to have more and more insulin production. And um, you're not even going to have the sugar. So it creates an even more havoc in your body because you didn't actually even have sugar coming in. You just had your insulin numb down. So it's really bad, too, when you don't have sugar come in and you produce insulin. Because it's like, wait, now your body's like, wait, but I didn't get sugar. And so now it's, it creates even more havoc. You don't want to do that. People think that you want to trick your brain. You don't want to trick your brain. It's not a good idea. For one thing, you can't trick your own brain. I mean, that's such nonsense. It's your brain. You're the one thinking you can trick your own brain. Your brain knows exactly what you're doing. When you say, oh, I'm going to trick you, brain. Okay. The brain's just like, you're an asshole. No, I'm going to go. Okay, you're going to trick me? Then I'm going to go into total um, survival mode. And total survival mode means store fat, don't do anything, prepare for hibernation. That's what your brain will have you do. And that's what it does when you start fucking with it. If you go, brain, I'm not going to listen to you. I'm going to eat this. I don't care what Joy says. I know this is good for me. All right, 
I'll just keep producing insulin. You do your thing. You keep drinking your coffee. I'll just keep producing insulin because you keep telling me that my blood sugar is rising with no sugar. And I don't know what to do, so I'm going to just keep producing insulin. And you just keep getting fatter year and year and year, and you don't know why because you think you're eating the same thing. And you think coffee is a pass. People think coffee makes them lose weight. They have this misconception that coffee makes them lose weight. I thought that for years. People drink coffee to lose weight. Don't we know this? They say, oh, because I don't want to eat. But now the whole time you're drinking coffee, you're telling your body to store fat, and you're also just creating havoc because, like I said, you don't want to do that whole thought I got sugar but didn't get sugar, produced insulin but there was no sugar. All of those things cause disruptions in your body, and those were things that cause headaches, pains, all these things that we think, oh, why do I have constant headache? Well, maybe because you're doing things like that to your body all day long. And then on top of it, caffeine and sugar are highly addictive. So if you don't have your caffeine and sugar, you'll start getting headaches. That is because those are addictive, super addictive drugs. Caffeine and sugar are drugs. They fall into every category of a drug. 100%. We don't have drugs stronger than those two. <laughs> okay, sugar is the strongest. Caffeine, maybe not as strong as sugar, but sugar is the strongest drug. People don't want to, they think, oh, heroin. Sugar is way stronger than heroin because for one thing, you need it for survival. You don't need heroin for survival. You can recover if you got addicted to heroin. You can stop and you can live. You can die when you're recovering too, people do, but you can live. Sugar, if you completely cut out sugar, you would die. So it's a substance that you need in small doses but in large doses, is lethal. That's the only substance we have in the whole world for humans that's that way. Um, I think, well, I mean, maybe we have other ones, but, you know, um, I know. I heard that you can die from too much water. I don't know if that's true. I guess you could drown yourself in too much water, but you know what I mean. You guys know what I mean because you do need water too. Um, I heard that someone drank too much water in that actually, but I don't even know if that's true. I don't, I, I don't know about that one, but you also need water. You need water and sugar and we're made up of 80 and you need some other things too, but I'm saying sugar is the thing that we need for survival that in excess, which we are mainly doing most of us actually becomes lethal on many levels. It becomes lethal because it allows the production of a lot of diseases to spread and disorders and things, um, and especially things like um, candida, which candida is a fungus that we all have, um, but in excess, candida can be a nightmare. And I had candida overgrowth. You get that from a high sugar diet. And candida overgrowth is one of your issues, too, that's causing um, all of your, like, uh, pains and aches and things. Is A lot of it comes straight from candida overgrowth. So candida overgrowth, look it up on the Internet. You'll be shocked at the symptoms. So many that you'll actually have, too. You'll be like, oh, geez. Um, and some of them, the main ones are the digestive issues. Um, things like bloating, gas, um, IBS, the irritable bowel. Um, IBS zero bowel syndrome for those that don't know, um, gastrointestinal things, um, low sex drive, um, irritation, like being irritable, uh, being moody, um, being, uh, aggressive, like out of nowhere, you know, when people get all these like mood swings, um, low sex drive, obesity, um, Salt and sugar, intense, intense, intense salt and sugar cravings. That's what I used to get. Really intense where you just feel hungry nonstop no matter what you eat. They give even more intense because I'll explain why in a second. Um, uh, uh, let me think. There's, there's so many. Uh, the bloating is the big thing if you've experienced where you just when you eat and you get really bloated. That's what I was experiencing. Um, oh, skin. A lot of skin irrita irritations. Um, uh, uh, I mean, the, the list goes on and on and on. But... Here's the thing, you guys. Candida overgrowth occurs from lots of things. One of them is antibiotics, which not just when you take them for your own medicine, when you're getting them from the foods. Um, a lot of antibiotics creates um, disruptions in your body, and that will actually cause a candida overgrowth. The fungus, I don't know why the antibiotics do, but the, the 
something with the antibiotics caused an issue with the fungus. I, I like I said, I'm not a scientist or a doctor, so you can read about this yourself. But um, antibiotics, high sugar. The reason the sugar is the candida live off of sugar. They're stored in your fat cells, but they live off of sugar. So the more sugar you eat, the more candida spreads. So they um, they flourish as you continue to feed them. So as you continue to eat sugary diets, you actually get a bigger issue of candida. So that's why as you get more obese, you get more bloated and more uncomfortable and everything besides just the own weight of your body, you actually have things growing on the inside of you that are causing a lot of issues because they're hungry as well. It's basically like... And you can think of it almost like tapeworm because those little guys are sitting inside, but tapeworm makes you thin. Candida makes you fat because all day long those little guys want to eat sugar. And they go, give me sugar, give me sugar, give me sugar, give me sugar. And they also help turn off the sensors in your brain to where you feel full. Those guys, um, they're fungus. Fungus are a very interesting thing. We are, like Fungus are one of those things. Are, uh, the classification, it's like there's so many crazy different thing kinds of fungi that we um it's they still are finding out new stuff about fungi it's one of those things that it's it's kind of a still a little bit of a mystery they're they're a very interesting thing that we have in the universe and you can't get rid of them um so you'll always have them but you don't want an excess of them and the way to get rid of them is to cut out the sugar and also keep your fat low. So what will happen is some people will cut out the sugar but then continue to eat high fat. And candida also like fat because they live in your fat cells and they, they find a way to make the fat work for them pretty good. So they'll, you'll also start to crave a lot of fattening things you'll find too when you have a candida overgrowth. You want really fattening like oils, really oily things. And sugar and salt, like intense, like way more than intense than you've ever experienced if you get it. And, and that might be what you're experiencing if you are obese. You can have, you probably have candida overgrowth if you're obese. I would, I'm not a doctor, so I'm not going to say I know 100%, but in my theory of what I've read and from what I've seen with myself, I would, I would argue that everyone that's obese has candida overgrowth. Because that's probably one of the things that's, in a way, contributing to the weight. Because candida really nags at you to continue to eat. There, you just, you just always hungry, always, you never full, and you're always tired. On top of it, and what happens with candida is when you do start to get rid of them. They're really nasty. They burn off these toxins once they start dying. And they can burn off, burn off to like 79 or 80 something toxins in your body as you're killing these little buggers off. And you kill them off by not eating sugar. But it can be just a real mess as you're getting rid of these guys. And this has happened from high sugar diets, the glutens, the GMOs, the, the, all this stuff. I believe has contributed to candida overgrowth because basically candida like an unhealthy environment. They like a warm, damp, nasty, gross environment. So the more unhealthy you are, the more candida you will have. So when I was bulimic, they flourished in my stomach because it must have just been a nasty mess in there because I was just eating everything and anything and then throwing up and who knows what kind of havoc you cause. So I had... The wor and that's why I have to eat as strict as I do because mine still flare up. If I eat anything out of my norm, which I do, um, you know, just the organic protein, we were doing only beef, but now with this shutdown, we've had to open up to more options because they just haven't had beef available. So, like, today we're doing organic chicken and organic ahi tuna and greens and garlic, and that's it. That's all we eat all day and water. So after this, oh, geez, what time is it? Oh, yeah, it's coming up soon. Remember, I'm, they're cutting off my water pretty soon, so I'm going to get off here soon because I have to prep my meals so then I can wash my dishes because I don't want to. I could cook throughout the day, but they don't have dirty dishes all day, and I don't just drive me up the wall. Um, and I need to take a bath before they cut off my water. Um, and th I guess they're fixing uh, our water heater, supposedly, for the building. 
hopefully. I'm hoping it's not like a conservation of uh, trying to save now that, you know, people aren't paying or whatever, but I think they said they had to fix the water heater, so hopefully that's the issue. Um, but luckily they gave us a warning. They often turn off our water here with no warning, but only for about an hour or two. But, but that can be very inconvenient if you were planning on showering during that hour or two, like if you had to go somewhere. And they do it with no warning. But this time they gave us a day warning, thank goodness, because it's going to be for like nine hours. So that's going on in at nine. So I'm going to get off here because I have to cook two. I have to prep two meals. I'm going to cook the tuna and the chicken. Um, I ended up cooking the chicken yesterday. Sorry, I didn't scope it. Gosh, could I scope it? I just don't really have the time now that I'm on a time crunch. Maybe, um, next time I get chicken, which I don't know if that'll be, I might be going back to the beef whenever it's available. If they have my beef, I'm buying my beef again. But I will one of these days make chicken on scope for you guys. Um, but like I said today, I just don't think I have time because I'm on that time crunch to get everything done before they shut off our water. Because we're not going to have any water. Like, we, I talk about washing hands. There you go, out the window. They shut off our water for nine hours here, so what are you going to do? Um, see, all these things, like, people think, like, oh, do these things, and what are you going to do? For one thing, we lived in a cave. That's why I'm not about the washing hand thing, because that's when I realized that you do not need to, um, there's a certain level of hygiene, but then there's a certain level of hygiene that actually a little bit of dirtiness keeps you healthy in the sense of too much antibacterial. I don't mean dirty like not showering. I bathe every day, thank you very much, if not a couple times a day. Now, especially after living in a cave. But what I'm saying is the level of cleaning your hands all the time. What I do is I shower and then I wash dishes all day long. That is how I clean my hands. I do not do any additional antibacterial soaps. I use the dish soap because I'm cleaning and I take a bath every day and I often uh, rinse off several times a day um, in the shower. I do not sit there and wash my hands all day. I don't. I never have. Uh, I never since I was a little kid. My mom did not think that um, antibacterial soap was a good idea. So she actually she did the same as me. She she was uh, she cleaned for a living. So she worked with cleaners all day. You know, like she's working with all the bleach and everything. So she felt that she you know was clean enough. And I'm the same way. I'm cleaning all day. So I'm not going to do an additional putting antibacterial on top of when I'm already using dish soap and everything else. Um, but you don't want to take all the good germs off of you. People, right now I'm seeing germs are everywhere. A lot of germs are very good for you and beneficial, like healthy bacteria. If you get rid of all your bacteria, you make yourself way more susceptible to everything. And you will get more sick. The more you wash your hands, the more sick you're going to get because you just got rid of any of your good fighting bacteria. So you want bacteria to help fight against illnesses and diseases and flus and viruses. And well, don't really help too much. Bacteria and virus are a little different. But that's the funny other thing is viruses and bacteria are different. So soap stops bacteria. It doesn't stop a virus. That's the other thing. Soap does not stop a virus, you guys. It's for bacteria. It stops your bacteria, but bacteria helps you fight the virus. So you don't want to get rid of all your good bacteria by using that soap all day long. For one thing, let your hands get a little bit of regular. Now, if you do something, I'm not saying if you have something on your hands, don't wash it off. I'm saying on a daily basis, you don't need to every two seconds wash your hands that they're saying now. I mean, yeah, if you're going to cook, wash your hands. If you're going to do certain things, wash your hands. If you just went to the restroom and touched yourself, wash your hands, you know. But this, like, thing of, like, go up and wash your hands every couple of minutes now they have. I see these signs and then good 20 seconds and make sure you use antibacterial soap and all this. I'm like, for one thing, you're going to rinse off all of your good bacteria. All of it's coming off if you just keep washing your hands all day long. That's not a good idea. Anyways, you guys can argue with me about that. I don't care. You wash your hands. I'm not doing mine as much as they say, so forget that. Um, and uh, like I said, so even if I was someone that would wash my hands all day long, they cut off my water for nine hours. So what am I supposed to do today, you guys? So you see how we get these crazy things that we think are just set in stone that we got to do, and this is just the way it is, and what are you going to do if you can't? Well, I don't know. What are, is everyone here in our apartments going to do today when we can't for nine hours? I don't know. We're going to live. 
I'm sure we're going to live. I'm sure everyone here is going to live unless we have some really, really old person here that's already on their deathbed. <laughs> but everyone else that's healthy is going to live today going nine hours without water. It's going to suck, but we're going to live. And we're not going to wash our hands for nine hours if we're home. If we go out, maybe we can wash our hands. But if we're home, we can't. Y'all can oh, God, oh, God. What are we going to do? I don't know. Can I call Governor Sislek? Can he bring me over some water? <laughs> I mean, what, no, of course not. So what are you going to do? So um, this whole thing of this hysteria and paranoia and panic and fear for a flu virus that people are recovering has got to go out the window. We got to wake up. And it's all of you who are responsible. We all need to take responsibility because every time we put on that mask, we tell people, be careful. We go into this panic thing. We are not helping the situation. We're not. We're not. Whenever I hear someone say, be careful, I say, why? Hey, I'm not going to get, I'm not going to die from this. I don't even think I'll get sick, but if I do, I'm not even going to die. I know that. I can recover from the flu. 100%. I'm extremely healthy. I eat an extremely healthy diet. I know I'm going to do just fine. So why would I stop my life? And you know what? My life got stopped a lot, not by choice, because Governor Sislek shut down Las Vegas. But we're starting to still make it through. And thankfully, we are with a thank you universe, because uh, they shut down all of the hotels in Las Vegas. That is my livelihood. Thank you very much, Governor Sislek. Um, I know no one cares about my livelihood, but I do. <laughs> um, and J.R. Rich does. So, uh, and all of you care about your own personal livelihoods, and this virus has affected everyone's, even if you still have a job. Even if your job is flourishing, because let's say you're a delivery driver, it still affected your livelihood because everything is changing. So even if you're a delivery driver, and let's say you're working more, or you're a construction worker and Governor Sislek is still allowing you to work, and you added hours, let's say you're even getting overtime, so you're bonusing while the rest of us are you know, not having any money, but good for you. I'm glad for those people because, believe me, I don't want people out of work. So in no way do I want those people to not make money. I'm happy for that. What I'm saying is it's hypocritical what uh, Governor Sislek is doing. And it makes no sense, which tells me it's political because you don't allow construction to continue when workers' lives are at risk if there really is a deadly virus. So right there, you can know it's not a deadly virus. For one thing, the statistics are showing it's not a deadly virus. More people are recovering than dying, which would make it not a deadly virus. That would make it a high recovery rate virus. <laughs> that people that always die from the virus are dying. And people that probably would have died this year from anything and maybe would have died even during this time from anything and not even sick, like they were already that sick, the people that are dying. Okay, so we got that. Now, but, so, even if you have a job that you're working overtime, everyone's life is going to be changed because we just really changed the world in a way we've never seen before. Because we've never had this much structure that is now crumbling. And we think everything's going to be fine. People think that you can just extend credit forever. Money has to come from somewhere. It doesn't just come from thin air. And your credit comes from a bank that a bank has to get the money from somewhere. And your bank does have a limit. Your bank can run out of money. People seem to think banks can't run out of money. Now, yes, the government can step in. But the government only has so much money unless we start printing more money. Do you see what I mean? There's a limit of how much we can keep extending. So people will be affected whether they realize it or not. Because even if, let's say, you're just extending yourself with credit, well, when this is over, business is going to slowly trickle back, if at all, if your business even survived. So that credit is going to become even bigger and bigger. You think, oh, as soon as everything opens, I'll just pay back that money. But as soon as everything opens, it's going to be slow for most businesses uh, in a lot of places. Depending on your business, some businesses might flourish right away, depending on if it's, a, if it's necessary. But most, remember, the necessary things are still going. So most businesses are non-essential that are supposed to be non-essential, the ones that closed, you know. Um, 
but they left some non-essential are still going, you know, here in construction. But anyways, uh, here in Vegas. But it's going to be slow. So these advances that we're getting, these credits, these whatever people are stretching their, oh, you know, you know, you can't be evicted for three months. But these bills add up, and they add up fast when you don't have income coming in or you have less income coming in. Or now uh, you don't have a business or your business is suffering. Those bills can become snowballing avalanches huge real fast. (laughs) Um, And people are kind of living in this little false reality right now that everything is going to be pancakes and butterflies once they lift these quarantines or these stupid shutdown rules we have, but that's not going to be the case. And I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but if you have not realized that you cannot shut down things for 30 to 45 days to whatever and everything recover and be fine, it's not going to happen that way. Many small businesses have and are going to close. I'm sure a lot of small businesses have already closed. They already I've already maxed out what they can do. They they know that they can't open their doors come the day of opening, especially here in Vegas. So what I'm upset about is that we have allowed as a society to let hysteria get the best of us and we have destroyed our own economy due to hysteria for a normal flu virus. And we allowed the politicians to create this propaganda, and we fed into it by panic buying, by putting masks on, by self-isolating ourselves, by closing our businesses before the government did, by all of these things that were unnecessary, all due to panic and hysteria. For what? That we might die? That is what we're worried about, that we might die? Do you realize we shut down the whole world just because we might die from a virus? Even if it had killed a ton of people, why would you shut down the world? We've affected the world way more than even if 500,000 had died. We've affected the entire population economically now. So ask yourselves, did it matter what kind of virus we had? Was the, what we did necessary? And if you say yes, then why? Because not that many people are dying. And you say, oh, because we did these steps. No, because they are seeing that people that got the virus are recovering which would mean the steps were not necessary because the majority of the people are recovering. If the majority of the people were dying, these excessive steps would have been necessary because we would say, thank goodness we saved everyone. But the majority of the people are getting the virus and feeling fantastic after. They were singing rap songs like Rita Wilson and Tom Hanks. And they're telling everyone, you know, the, oh, you know they're, those two in particular are probably still saying it's bad because they're probably Democrats themselves. I don't know particularly those two, but a lot of the people are not coming out saying they're feeling great because they want to continue this hysteria when anyone that recovered should be saying, you guys, I recovered. Why aren't we hearing about those stories, even though the number is astronomical of who's recovering? It's in the hundreds of thousands who have recovered in the United States. And we're not hearing those stories at all. We're hearing of the one senior citizen that was already, everyone thought probably was dead, and all of his relatives, oh, he's still alive? Good Lord. And that's, I mean, I've seen the photos of some of the people that have died. One guy was in a wheelchair. He was like this. He was so old. I mean, you're like, really? I mean, I'm not trying to be mean. I know uh, he's someone's family, but everyone dies at some point. So we need to get over this thing that, oh, my God, I lost a mother and a brother. People die. It sucks, 
and we get over it. Or you die yourself. That's your option, okay? You get over it when someone dies. It's tough. It's hard. It's life. You either move on or you kill yourself. And I tried to kill myself after my mom killed herself. It didn't work out. Try a couple times. Didn't work out. So I gave up trying, and now I'm living. And now I'm happy I'm living because I actually love life now because I was killing myself because of my bulimia because I was so unhappy. Now that I've found solutions, I don't feel the desire to kill myself. I feel like I'm very happy living. I actually enjoy every day. So when you actually find the proper nutrition and diet and, and healthy lifestyle, it's funny. You don't feel as depressed. So even when I get depressed now, it's not suicidal depressed. That's more just me dealing with old feelings that for years I had stuffed down when I was bulimic. So now once in a while I get depressed from old feelings that are now rising up that I now need to deal with. Because now I'm in a state that I can deal with it. For years I pressed everything down as we most do, right? Most people use means caffeine, alcohol, drugs, sugar to numb their feelings. They eat because they're sad. They drink because they're sad, angry, depressed. You know, like they have a bad day at work. They need a, a, a glass of wine. They need to go. I used to have to go binge after work. That was my thing. I had to go home and binge whatever. I, you know, and I'd usually gra- stop by a grocery store, grab a bunch of stuff, binge, eat, binge, throw up. Then I could be about my way. Of like it was like a uh, anxiety thing. Like I even felt so much stress until I did that. And then I felt better. And then I called my friend. Okay, we can go hang out now. Cause you know this is before people knew I was bulimic. So I'd get my bulimia out of the way. And then then I just wouldn't eat around friends. You know that's how I used to avoid it until I got better a bulimia. Then I'd eat around them. And then I'd just throw up in the bathroom and no one knew. But in the beginning, so that's why some people say, "Oh, my friend's not bulimic. They I never even see them eat." Yeah, watch them twenty four seven and see what happens. I'm telling you, a lot of people are bulimic and they're hiding it. And you go, why are you talking about this so much? Not to out all the bulimics. To let you know this is an epidemic that is going on that either people are overweight or they're using means like bulimia to be thin. And all of those are unhealthy. Bulimia, you might feel better because you're not as heavy, but you're creating so much havoc in your body. And I'm telling you, I am like three years now in recovery and I still am dealing with just the pains and the aches and the things of just like so much damage I did to my throat, my esophagus, my liver, my intestines, everything. Because that's acid that comes out every day, destroying, destroying your throat. That's why I have a hoarse voice. It was way worse when I was still bulimic. And that's one thing people go, well, how do we know you're not bulimic? Uh, you would know because I couldn't talk. <laughs> Um, I, and the couple of times that I, um, uh, went back like in 2016, immediately my voice got bad again. That's how I, I kind of tried to hide it from Jay Rich, but he'd be like, what's up with your voice again? And that's when I was, um, uh, uh, lying, you know, and sneaking being bulimic again. Um, because it just immediately, like once you've damaged it now, some people don't have a damaged voice. That probably just means they just didn't do as much damage as me. It doesn't mean they're not bulimic just, but when you, um, do it to the level that I did and one person in particular that I like to use an example is Ivanka Trump. Ivanka Trump is a bulimic. And if you guys don't know that you need to wake up. And if you're not, if you're not heard the woman speak, that is the voice of a bulimic. So that super hoarse voice that you hear some women, that's bulimia. Um, there's no other excuse for that unless you have laryngitis every day of your life. That'd be your only option. And no one has a voice like that naturally. I used to tell people that that, um, and I read, I read about it because I read because people. I even had some doctors say, "No, something's wrong with you. You should not." Say, oh no, I was just born like this. You know, I would lie to people, and I read about it and. If your voice is hoarse, there's no explanation other than you you just damaged your vocal cords. Um, there's not just my voice it is born that way. If your voice is hoarse, you damage your vocal cords in some way or another. And usually through bulimia is where most people do it. Some people do it with singing. You can oversing, but usually singers do that because of bulimia. A lot of the singers that have damaged their voice was because of bulimia. Elton John is bulimic. uh, Miley Cyrus is bulimic. Justin Bieber is bulimic. Hailey Bieber is bulimic. Um, Mariah Carey is bulimic. Um, Lady Gaga is bulimic. Uh, 
Those ones I know for sure. Ariana Grande is bulimic. Demi Lovato, we knew, is bulimic. And now, as you can see, Demi Lovato probably isn't bulimic because she's heavier now. If you were bulimic, and if you supposedly recovered, and if you eat anything like regular food, then you would be heavy. So if anyone claims they recovered from bulimia and is continuing to eat what they ate, same with anorexia, any of those things, um, anorexia is a little different because they don't eat. So that one's... <laughs> You'll just see someone doesn't eat. But um, ever, like, they just eat so minimal. Anorexics just eat so minimal. They basically just starve themselves all the time. And now bulimics will sometimes starve themselves so that people think they're anorexics, but really in private, then they gourd themselves and throw up. Or sometimes they gourd themselves in public, too. It depends on your level of bulimia. I started to eat in front of people, and they're like, you eat a lot. Oh, yeah, I got a great metabolism. But anyway, so the reason why I bring up this, not to talk about my own bulimia is it's an epidemic going on, and especially with the younger kids. And the celebrities are promoting it by showing themselves constantly eating food and then people thinking that you can be thin like them. So uh, Caitlyn Jenner, that's another one. I just, she's a bulimic. And what those people are doing is all kinds of surgeries too, so that's not even fair. They are changing their bodies, and so now younger people are thinking, why can't I have Caitlyn Jenner's tiny waist in her huge ass or, you know, the, the ones? Well, they're getting surgeries for that stuff. <laughs> no one's born with these. But have you seen their bodies when they before? You can see before and after they're getting surgeries to change their bodies for those ones, the Jenners and the Kardashians. Uh, uh, but the people that don't have money to morph their bodies generally are just resorting to bulimia. And bulimia, for a while, can work to where you look good. People go, oh, they, they look good. How can they be bulimic? Especially when you're young. You can do it for a long time and, and, be, and look pretty good, and people don't know. Um, but there does come a point when it starts to take a toll on your appearance. And that's when bulimics really start to lose it because you're being bulimic to be good looking generally, right? To be thin and you want to be attractive. But what happens is you start to um, get kind of not attractive bodies where it's like small and skinny in some places and then you put fat in other places. That's because when you're unhealthy, you're going to store fat in the places you don't want, like your stomach under your arms, your thighs, your butt, um, your chin, your face, uh, all these little pockets. You'll get chubby faces, uh, double chins. People get the, You see the people who do this a lot because they don't want the double chin in their photos. Ariana Grande does that so much. She only likes to be shot from the left side with her head up in every video. It's so annoying. It drives me insane. Watch. She only likes one side. So even if you think she's on the other side, they flipped it. <laughs> she only shoots from one side. Um, she does not like her other side. Barely. I mean, barely will she show her other side. It's always her left side and always up like this because she's getting a double chin. So people say, oh, Ariana Grande is so skinny. If you have not seen Ariana Grande recently, Ariana Grande covers her body even at her concerts. You say, oh, no, she's in a little skirt. and a thing. She is in a huge skirt, for one thing. Now, she used to wear little skirts. If you notice, her skirts have gotten larger, and they might still be short, but they're huge. They're like, like this huge bell thing, so it's distracting, and she wears them up to here. So everyone is smaller right here below their boobs. That's the smallest part of your stomach. And then it gets bigger as you go down. So when you wear clothes that come up here, everyone looks like they have a small waist. And that's what the girls are doing more now. They're going for the high-waisted so that you look like they have a tiny waist. But below that is a lot of fat that they're generally covering. And bulimia, you get a pocket right here, right, um, right above... <laughs> Below your belly button, right above, right above your pussy, right below. It really is like you get a pocket here of fat right below your belly button, and it'll drive you nuts. You'll be like, ah, can't lose it. And that's why they cover that up, pull it up here, pull your shorts up here, you know, pull it up even above their belly button. And you'll be like, oh, my God, I have such a tiny waist. And then they do the kind of where they bow out, whether it be pants or whether it be a skirt. So then it goes, Ow! Now you don't see their shape. You, all you see is the small waist, and now you don't see that they have thighs going on, that they got the uh, stomach going on, and now they're wearing boots up to here covering their legs. So like Ariana Grande wears huge boots. All she shows is about this much of her leg, because the rest is a skirt and the boots 
And so you're barely seeing her body. And you're thinking she's still tiny because she used to be so tiny. But I'm telling you, she's believe making what happens is it eventually catches up with you and you start to put on that added weight, like I said, and also the caffeine starts to make you store fat. And she drinks a lot of caffeine. And um I, I follow, I check out all the star stuff. That's why I know all this stuff. I'm, I'm Jerry used to get on my, oh, why are you checking this out? But now I realized I was doing it for research because I, I didn't realize a lot of these stars are bulimic. I was trying to look like them for the longest time and I thought I was the only one that was bulimic. It didn't take me till getting over it till then I started to see all of the like signs and you go, oh, duh. And um, the thing is, the stars now are doing this thing where they're really hiding their bodies. And they're wearing a lot of baggy things, baggy sweatshirts, baggy pants, baggy this and that. And everyone still believes that they're thin because you think underneath the baggy clothes is that star that you remembered a couple years ago when they were thin. But the majority of the actors and um, singers and everyone, musicians everywhere, have put on a lot of weight. And their biggest culprit, like I said, is the... Um, the caffeine, I think, is the one that most people are not realizing, but also just the high sugar, everything. A lot of people choose it vegan. A lot of actors and musicians have chosen to be vegan, which, like I said, is a high sugar diet. So as they choose to be vegan, which I heard Miley Cyrus is vegan, um, Kim Kardashian's vegan, what they don't realize, at first, that might seem like a good option. They probably lost some weight, but longer term, it's going to be higher sugar than when they were eating meat. And so they're going to start to pack on more fat than muscle because they're generally going to be eating less protein than they probably were when they ate meat. Because most people probably ate meat and then decided they're going to become a vegan. And so then at first they might think, oh, I lost all this weight because they cut out the dairy. That's often what happens. And that's a good thing. Cutting out the dairy is a very good thing. I don't eat dairy, and I don't recommend you do either. Okay, all right, I'm about to get off here. I have like six minutes. I'll tell you really quick before I get off here because I got to start getting ready. Like I said, I'm going to cut off my water. I'll tell you why not to eat dairy really fast because people go, oh, what's wrong with dairy? The problem with dairy is it's made for a 1,500 to 2,000 plus pound cow. It is a perfect amount of nutrition for a calf and for the cows. It has the right amount of protein to sugar to fat for a cow. It does not have the right amount for a human. It's too much protein, too much sugar, and too much fat for humans. That is why we have trouble digesting it. That is why we see a lot of issues with sugar, I mean with dairy, and most people don't even realize, but it's um, the sugar is one of the big things, and that's the lactose. Well, you think, oh, it's not very much, but it's actually a lot because all of the things in milk is too much for us to process. So we think, oh, well, it's got all this protein and it's only got egg. But it's actually too much for whatever reason. We are not able to process um, cow milk like we thought we could. We think we can, but that's where most of the gastrointestinal problems are coming from. That's where most of the sinus problems are coming from. Allergies are due to dairy. It's weird. People don't realize that. Jenna Rich had the worst allergies of anyone I'd ever met. And when we cut out dairy, he doesn't have any allergies. It's crazy. I mean, his were insane. We were going to get him a nose surgery. It was so bad. And um, so also in nature, we would not eat another animal's milk. Uh, and other animals don't. We now have made it to where we you know, milk the cow. But generally in nature, we wouldn't have gone up to a cow and started sucking on their tit. Do you get what I'm saying? So that is where, once again, it's a thing out of nature. We have to then, you know, process it and do all this stuff. All of that would make it something that you shouldn't consume because you want to stick with things that you would do in nature. That's the good rule of them. If you're not going to go up to a cow and suck on its tit yourself, then don't drink the milk that comes out of it. Okay? You're not the animal that's supposed to go and it's for the calves. And it's for them to become... 1,500 to 2,000 pound animals. So if you eat what they're eating, you're going to become a 1,500 to 2,000 pound animal. That's why dairy is a huge culprit for weight. Too. All of these are. I say all of them, but every, all of the ones that I listed, the things that I've cut out, all of those are contributing factors. So if you only cut out one, you have all the other ones. So you got to Eventually think all of those ones you want out of your diet if you actually want to be ultimately healthy. Now, if you say, I don't care, I like the way I am, fine, don't listen to me. I'm saying for the ones 
that want to be their ultimate dream body they've always been wanting. And that's what you can get by eating the way I do. And not even barely exercising, just being active. All right, guys, I got to go because they're going to cut off our water. So I got to start prepping the food and take a bath before. They're going to cut off at 9, so I got two and a half hours to get everything ready, (laughs) which is not that much time when I got to cook two meals and take a bath and stuff. So thanks, everyone. Jai Reggie, you still around? He goes in the room and he falls asleep, but I like him to turn off the cameras because otherwise you guys just get – because it'll capture – what Periscope does is it captures the last photo. You can change it, but – I forget. So the last thing, so it always will be like half my hand or something, and it just doesn't look very nice. So I like him to turn it off so you guys have something nice for the, the thumbnail, you know? But if I if he doesn't come, I'll just turn it off, and then I'll just, you can change the photos. So then, Jai Rachel, are you sleeping? Like I'm still a day old, and it's been like that since the day yo. I'm more time than a rolling or sinker. Step on deck, your neck, or do what I say so. Get up or get out, get down. Get down. Let's move. Shout out to my man Kelly Kwame. We on top. Shout out, shout out. Check it out.